Hello again. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Right on our strength. Talking sprint car racing. Our favorite time of the week. And we are so glad that you have joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post in the Hercules Tire Studios here in Concord, North Carolina. Welcome back. Uh, you were on special assignment last week. I and, was. Uh, welcome back. Good to have you back. And a busy, busy time. It sounds like in the old Evernham household. Yeah, just a little busy. You know, just six Saturday nights in, in a row on live network yeah. TV with, you know. You were at Stafford. Uh, Aaron Evernham's husband, Ray Evernham, and Tony Stewart, and uh, Sandy Montag, and George Pine. They all got together and come up with this crazy SRX racing experience idea, which sounded good on paper two years ago, and it sounded great 18 months ago, and it sounded Sounded good, 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 good. And then this past Saturday night was opening night at Stafford Motor Speedway in Stafford Springs, Massachusetts. You were there. How was Or Stafford Springs, Connecticut. Yes. How are you? How I'm, was I'm it? great. You know, it, it was awesome. It was so neat. Like you said, it start, the idea started actually years ago, but really started to come together probably a year ago. So to watch this somewhat involved, you know, but obviously hearing sure. a lot from Ray, to see something like this so big come together and then to see it become a reality was really neat. Like, I don't think it even hit me when we, I saw the cars were ready before they left sure. to go up there. Um, even when we got there, we're running and Kate and I were put to work. We're hanging banners. We're giving out souvenirs and all sorts of crazy stuff. But just before the race, like an hour before a green flag, I, Ray sent me a text. He's like, Hey, I want you to come out here with me. And the place was packed. Yeah. 10,000 people or 10,000 tickets were sold. So there's probably even more people than that. And to be at a racetrack that was, sold out and packed like that. I know us sprint car people get to see that occasionally, but with COVID, it's kind of been a while. It's been a while. To see that excitement and the energy and then to see this, like knowing you're counting down to go live on national t- you know, television, on network television, it was, uh, it was actually, I don't even know, it was a moment. And okay. then to see, well, I know we were going to talk about my, my good buddy, yeah, Doug Kobe, this? that I race quarter midgets with, Yeah, known him my whole life, to see him go out there and beat Tony Stewart, Greg Biffle, Helio Castro Nevis, Tony Kanaan, the list goes on. In front of his hometown crowd, that place went nuts. And after, I think it, they caught it a little bit on television, but everyone started chanting, Colby, Colby. And it was like, I don't know. It, it brought me back to a cool place of a Saturday night racetrack, of a low, you know, which is what the whole point of SRX was to do, was to, to right. connect the world of superstars to our local racers. And it was a special night. We're living in a really neat time. Uh, because that connection, SRX, certainly that is part of the mission there. Yep. What Kyle Larson is doing is <laughs> part of the mission there as well. Yep. And I, I, I hadn't, we'll get back to this. We'll get back to Doug Colby here in just a second. But you mentioned that, tying it together. Uh, l- let's move over to Knoxville where big, sexy Brandon Overton won $276,000. <laughs> he won both dream yep. races. And Kyle Larson gets into the media center after winning the all-star race and $1 million and said, I'm glad Brandon Overton wasn't here to take all of the money. <laughs> the connection, yeah. I, I, I really love what we're seeing in this, and SRX is part of it. Yep. And when I, I read where Doug Colby took the night off from the NASCAR tour, and I'm like, wow, yeah, that's a big, big step. And then I'm like... Because, Man, I'm, glad, yeah, I'm he, glad he doesn't regret it. I bet he don't regret that moment. No, I don't think so. And, but he basically took away his chances of running for a seventh championship. Right. By, by missing it, to go to SRX. And he said, I didn't even have to think twice. Yeah. Like, this and was- a lot of the funding for those NASCAR modified teams is through the ownership. So the yeah. owner put another guy in it. But the, you're right, the driver and, and championship. And that car is actually owned by Doug. So. Oh, okay. So there you go. That's where most <laughs> I mean, of the money comes. sponsorship. Okay, but yeah, well, that's yeah. cool. That's where most of the money is. So yeah. Doug Colby, the way this thing is structured is you've got your superstar drivers. From the past and present and, 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 and all these names. And local talent, local ringers. Yeah. Doug Colby's the local ringer, and he has put the bullseye squarely on Brian Brown, who's our next local ringer at Knoxville. He keeps saying that, too, and I'm thinking, oh, man, Brian, and pressure's on. Brownie's got the heat on. But in you know fairness to Brownie, it's a totally different type of car. At least what Doug has. Yeah, a little similar car. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it would be neat to see Brownie go out there. Can you imagine Knoxville yeah. if Brownie wins that? How that place will well, come? Well, if you think about the field that's going to be there, there's not a, other than Tony. There's not a lot of dirt experience. Some of them have never been on dirt. Marco yeah, Andretti's t- never been on dirt. Yeah, Tony. Tony Stewart probably has as much pressure as Brian Brown does, yeah. Yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, Ernie Francis Jr.'s like, I've never even, you know, been to a dirt track. You know, these guys are, it's, it's going to be fun to watch. It is neat. Uh, on a total different scale, but equally as neat, uh, I went to the famed Devil's Bowl Speedway on Saturday mm-hmm. night, the historic Devil's Bowl, the starting spot for the World of Outlaws. 
as I'm kind of getting ready to go, I'm like, I wonder who's racing there. I knew it was a sprint car 305. And it just struck me. Um, and, and I know we talk about this some with our Carolina Sprint to our local guys. But as I just started doing some homework on who's going to be there, I, I got into this IMCA 305 mm. modified thing. And, and no, this is not, you know, uh, you know, TV, network TV, everything. This is, this is your working on auto parts Monday through yeah. Friday and go race my 305 wing sprint car on Saturday or Friday night and Saturday. Um, I am telling you th- that IMCA Race Saver 305 program, and you're very familiar yeah. with it. You, mm-hmm. you, you, got, you actually, when Ray was running yeah, East race, Lincoln Speedway. Race a multi-time winner. Multi-time right? winner in that, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And when you guys were running East Lincoln, you were very involved with it, yep. bringing, bringing 305 sprint cars around. Um, that is stout. Yeah. In Texas. Oh, my gosh. Former national champion Marcus Thomas. Talk to him. And the, the thing I love about this, and this reminds me of, um, of, of the NASCAR weekly racing series. Marcus Thomas, we're here the first week of June. And he's like, yeah, the guy I'm racing in Pennsylvania raced last night. I didn't hear how he did. And so there's this national battle yeah. of drivers that will never see each other. And uh, he was good. Uh, this guy named Austin Mundy picked up the win. He was stout. He won also at Texas Motor Speedway. They had some sprint cars on Thursday night, I think it was. But the, the, the IMCA 305s, what a great program. And just to be at Devil's Bowl and to be at that historic racetrack yeah. and to be around sprint cars. And they had a nice crowd. They weren't wall-to-wall like Stafford. Yeah. Uh, but they had a nice crowd of people there. And just a Saturday night at the racetrack. Yeah. Whether it's whether it's uh, I love where we're at as a sport. Whether it's the the big time stuff with with Doug Colby and Brandon Overton and Kyle Larson, or if it's your weekly Saturday night track, Devil's Bowl, great crowd, great yeah. fun, everybody having a good time, popping a top on a beer, having some fun. Uh, we're at a really good spot in the sport. We are, and going back to Devil's Bowl or even Stafford, there's something very refreshing to be at the. And even the the drivers for SRX all talked about it. You know, they're used to being in IndyCar series or, or in NASCAR, and they're like, this is what I remember growing up. Even, even Tony Kanaan and Neilio, like, there's, a, yeah. there's less pressure. It's more fun. It's refreshing. You've got a big crowd, and there are local people that are just there to see them. It's, I, I don't know. There's something to be said for that. Um, I don't even know what the right word is. I mean, refreshing right. is, is a good way to describe it. But One of the dirty little secrets of racing, and Fred Raymer has talked a lot about this, is every one of us got into racing for fun. Yep. There are a large number of people in professional motorsports that have zapped the fun right out of it for themselves. I'm not talking yeah. about they did it to me. I'm talking about there are a number of people. And so when you get a moment like this yeah. where you get a chance to go back and do that, uh, just the fun factors through the roof. Yeah. Fred, Fred's talked about that. The boys, when they were running 305s, he said, I told those boys that's the best it's going to be. That's the best it's ever going to be. And now you look at Freddie, the pressure, the, the heat. The, the, exactly. The sponsors. Sponsors the whole and deal, everything yeah. else, yeah. And so it's neat stuff. It really is. The, the racing world, and uh, I, don't, I don't care where you live, and yes, we are partial to sprint cars. We understand that. But wherever you're at, there's a local racetrack mm-hmm. running on Friday or Saturday night. And, and just get yeah. there. Go to the pits. Meet somebody. Become a favorite. Become a regular there. Watching people walk into the stands. It was like the morning coffee shop. Yeah. You'd see a family sitting there. And then a few months later, another family would walk up. Hey, good to see you again this yeah. week. How is it going? Yeah. And kids are running down to the popcorn stand and dads are going to get yeah. beers together. The, the, the racing world, the short track racing world is just one of the gems of our society. It is. And, you know, being going back to the SRX event, some of those drivers just took in the environment. I watched Greg Biffle go to the local drivers meeting, not because he had to, because he wanted to, to talk to those guys. I saw Michael Waltrip, the street stocks lined up along the backstretch right where we were all pitted. Yeah. And he went from one car to the next, inter- like said, hello, good luck. And I thought, no one's asking him to do that. They appreciate it. You think about that. You're a yeah. street stock driver. Here's Michael Waltrip He's doing popping this. his head in your car and, you know, saying good luck, have a good <sighs> night. It's just good stuff. I, I'll tell you, a, a similar story. We are, we are way late here. <laughs> I don't even, you know, we're way late here. We'll, we'll get to our Hefner product, racing products. Similar story, uh, what Josh Berry is doing on the NASCAR mm-hmm. Xfinity Series. I've done a couple cars tour races. You walk in the pits. How about our guy, Josh Berry? How about our guy, yeah. Josh Berry? Guys, Berry. This connection between the big tracks and the little tracks is really going strong in so and many ways. I think ways. it was something that was missing for a lot of years. Yes, it really was. Yep. And uh, it is neat to see. That is for sure. After racing products, hot topics. We'll roll through these quickly. <laughs> Carson Macedo, speaking of rolling through things quickly. Wow, how about that? Swept the weekend at Knoxville. 11th career win, 5th of 2021. Uh, I think it's impressive also, while he was good, uh, how about Kerry Madsen in that 14 yeah. car looking stout? Didn't quite get the win, 
But I'm telling you, Pretty Carrie, strong. Carrie's got that car rolling really yeah. good for Tony. So that is a neat combination. Mm -hmm. Very interesting combination. Scotty Neitzel, we're going to talk to Scotty Neitzel. This may be the coolest story in the history of the world. Well, I don't know about the history of the world. Wow. It's got to be pretty cool for Scotty. He is a two-time champion of the IRA Bumper to Bumper Sprints. He has won 23 times prior to this year. His last win was five years ago in 2016. Friday night at Hartford, Saturday night at Wilmot. Cha-ching, cha-ching. He won them both. <laughs> so we're going to talk to Scotty Neitzel. Flow Racing All-Star Circuit of Champions, the Cometic Gasket, Ohio Speed Week presented by Hercules Tires. Friday, Ian Madsen. <laughs> Saturday, Cole Duncan. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, Kyle Larson picked up the win last night in the shocking breaking news story. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, Kyle Larson picked up the win. California, Ocean Speedway, Watsonville. Tim Kading, he's going to join us. Pick it up the win. Outdueling brother Bud. <laughs> Neat stuff. And Dominic Selzy, I guess he got sick of not winning again, so he won on Saturday night at Placerville. Lincoln Speedway, Freddie Raymer. The Fallen Firefighters Night at Lincoln Speedway is one of the coolest promos, local community mm. promos. Freddie Raymer, third win of the season. Jeff Halligan. And they raced at the action track, the tiny little bull ring. Mark Smith filling in for Tim Schaefer for Mike Hefter. Tim is overrunning mm -hmm. the Ohio Speedway. So how about getting Mark Smith and putting him yeah, in your car? Yeah, I like that. Not a, bad, not a bad shoe. Picked up the win at the action track. The absolute number one pit utility vehicle in sprint car racing and midget racing is a custom mule conversion from HRP. It starts with a solid platform, dependable, good-looking, great-looking, as a matter of fact, Kawasaki Mule. Yep, they're customized and built to each customer specifications. They have options like generator, air compressor, shock and radius rod racks, amazing toolboxes and drawers, LED lighting, walk-on roofs, and more. HRP Mule conversion perform, outlast, and maintain their value better, better than any other utility vehicle. HRP Mules, raising the standard, again, in pit utility vehicles. www.hrpracing.com. Mention this briefly. Cole Duncan, Danny Dietrich's the leader at Fremont. It's the All-Stars. It's Ohio Speed Week. The All-Stars at Fremont. That We <laughs> went a few years. I don't even know how we accomplished this. We went a few years where that didn't happen. Yeah. And I don't even know how you can accomplish that. Yeah, I, don't, I think there's got to be go a law hand. against it. There's <laughs> yeah. got to be a law against it. But they're back, and it's all good. And it's all good because of great racing, like Danny Dietrich leading, Cole Duncan stalking them, and our good friend Blake Anderson with the call on Flow Racing. And now for the Dry Dean Death-Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track move. Here comes Cole Duncan down the back stretch, drag race for the lead into turn number three. Final two left-hand turns, Dietrich closes the door. Duncan's got one last charge left at him. Off of turn number four, it's going to be a drag race. It's Cole Duncan by a nose! What a thriller at Fremont! That death-defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death. The official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Over the years, Drydean has stood for uncompromised value and proven performance. Known as the hardest working brand in heavy duty lubrication, Drydean's heritage is made in America and made to last. Drydean products work to increase the life and enhance the efficiency of your equipment in the toughest conditions. Learn more about Drydean's products at Drydean.com. From grassroots racing to NASCAR, Drydean is a proud supporter of racing everywhere. Flow Racing is the home of grassroots racing, with over 1,300 races streaming live in 2021. Watch the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl, World 100, Dirt Late Model Dreams, Sweet 16, and much, much more. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. From sprint cars on dirt to SK Modifieds on pavement, arena cross, drag racing, and everything in between, it's here, live, and on demand. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. That's F-L-O racing.com forward slash MRN. There is nothing better than California sprint car racing with a Cading in victory lane, is there, Aaron? That is yeah. pretty good stuff right <laughs> there. Yeah. That is For pretty, many years. Yes, it is. It's not the first time it's <laughs> yeah. happened, and I don't think it's going to be the last yeah. time either. Joining us fresh out from a trip from Watsonville's Victory Lane at Ocean Speedway on the Dry Dean Hotline, TK joins us. Hello, Tim. Welcome back to Wing Nation. How's it going? How are you guys doing today? We are great. Tim, does it ever get old winning races in your home state of California? No, it doesn't. You know, um, it was... You know, awesome to be able to race against my brother there towards the end, uh, middle of the race there. And, um, you know, he's been 
consistently fast at, at Ocean or Watsonville Speedway there, uh, running weekly. And um, for us to get the win there, you know, it was awesome. I think it's it's been a few years since we've won close to home, and uh, to have my son there was probably the best part about the whole night. So, Tim, Acading uh, uh, has won this race uh, uh, in the last five decades, at least once in the last five decades. How cool is your your family, your racing legacy? I mean, that's that's so neat. You you guys are so synonymous with California sprint car racing. What does that mean to you? Um, you know, it's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, if, if you grew up in California, you knew of the Sergeant um, Kading rival you know rivalry that went on. You know, as we were kids growing up between you know uh, Mike Sargent and my dad. Um, you know, and the entire Sergeant family. So um, to be able to win that race is awesome. Um, we have a great uh, friendship with the Sergeant family now. Um, you know, so from where it was, you know, 30 plus years ago to where it is now, it's a, it's a big difference. And it's, it's an amazing accomplishment to be able to win that race, you know, over, a, you know, five decades now. You know, it's it's uh, just tells you how long we've been in the sport and how competitive we've been throughout these, you know, last few decades of racing. It's crazy. It just is absolutely amazing. It's just damned impressive is what it is. It boils down to it. What is it like racing with Bud? Mm. <laughs> it's like um, putting the wrong shoe on the wrong foot at times. Um, you know, we're both very competitive in what we do. Uh, we bring out, you know, that little bit extra on to each other. Um, you know, we tend to know each other's probably moves and decisions more than, uh, you know, most people on a racetrack, um, you know, but whenever you get the chance to race with family, um, it either makes for a good Thanksgiving, bad Thanksgiving or holidays, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of go good or go bad. But, um, you know, to be able to race with family members, you know, I, I wish our dad was still racing with us. Um, we got our cousin Adam out here now and, uh, Probably when I decide to start start or slowing down racing or stop racing, my son will probably be in there beating down my door and laughing at me. Tim, you mentioned your son and, you, and how special it was that he was in victory lane. With your schedule and, your, you know, sometimes in the Midwest, you're all over the place, how neat was it to have him there and, and to get to celebrate with you? You know, it was it was awesome. Um, you know, they, they came in and, um, you know, they were sitting on top of the trailer and I, I got a few messages from people that, you know, we're in the pit area watching or hanging out. And my son, when we got the lead, just started yelling and screaming, go dad, go dad. You know, he always gives me the elbows up sign and, <laughs> and stuff like that. So it's, um, you know, with him being around, he loves racing. He doesn't want to race yet. He loves the, the working on the car aspect, which I am perfectly okay with right now. <laughs> um, you know, and so is his mom and you probably know the same thing, Aaron, but it's uh it's it's tough i mean mm -hmm. you know being away from him and then coming home and you know he latches on when you're gone for those couple of days and he you come home and it's it's all about him again you know and it's not about racing it is neat that's for sure i i can't imagine someone has to give tk the elbows up sign in there i mean other than it's your boy i get that but uh, he gets it honest i yeah i think you i think you you i think you get out of bed in the morning with elbows up my hunch is that's for sure uh, well Hopefully we all do. So that's that's good. I'm with you. I like that. I know I, I'm 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 doing it as well. Hey, your race team out there, Tim. Tell us about your race team out there and uh, the car they're putting under you this season. Um, you know, uh, uh, Josh Bates and Roger Hamilton. Um, Roger's uh, an old racer from San Jose days, and uh, Josh Bates is. Uh, we ran quarter midgets together growing up. So um, we have a, a great team. We got Bobby Scott. Um, you know, these guys work full-time jobs and we go racing on the weekend, you know. So uh, we we have, you know, an awesome car with the Vinyl Tech car and it um, it's, it's a competitive car. You know, we went from a hero to zero this weekend and, uh, you know, it wasn't lack of effort on Saturday night. We just got in two bad situations and, uh, you know, ruined our night on Saturday. But, you know, these guys have 100% faith in me, and I have 100% faith in them every weekend. And, you know, the the competition level in California is, you know, at its, at its peak right now. And there's, you know, five to eight good cars every night we go to a racetrack that could possibly win. You know, if 
if we could get Dominic to eat about 60 more tacos before he gets in a race car, um, I think we could probably beat him, you know, week in and week out. But, uh, you know, they have a, a great team with Jimmy Carr and, and Dominic and them. So, um, you know, if we can uh, just get a little bit more consistent and beginning of the night and qualifying, which really has not been the highlight of my life, but, uh, you know, you uh, you put yourself in a hole at the start of the night, it's hard to get back out of it. Tim, I was going to ask you about the competition level in California. We've talked to a number of drivers, and we've talked about it on the show a lot this year that, like you mentioned, it's kind of at its peak. You know, for years, you, you ran out with the Outlaws, you ran Midwest, you've run Pennsylvania, you've raced all over. But how neat is it for you to see California doing so well in the sprint car world? Um, you know, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, you look back at, at sprint car racing and a lot of the greats that, that come from our sport, you know, started or have some sort of ties with racing in California. And, um, you know, with, with the group of kids we have out here now, um, you know, it's, it's hard to pinpoint one exactly, but, you know, I mean, you know, you look at what, you know, Jeff Gordon, Kyle Larson, um, you know, all these guys that, that made a name for themselves and everything, uh, just, it, it shows that California has always had great talent be able to come out of the state and be able to go compete from, you know, here to the East coast. I, I, I agree. And with your brother and with you being out there running on a regular basis and Dominic out there eating his tacos and racing. <laughs> um, I, I just, I just find it fascinating. I, I think if, I think if California kept half of the talent, uh, the world of outlaws wouldn't even want to come to town. Um, and yeah. I think that's the neat part is, is that, uh, Bud appears to be on his game as good as he's been in years. I mean, if it, if it wasn't for Dominic, he'd have a number of wins this year. I, I just, I'm so excited about, it. I really can't wait for September when the outlaws roll in there. Cause it might be a different story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how good things are out there with you. Where, where are you off to after this? Now you, you had California this past weekend. What's, uh, what's coming up in the next couple of weeks for you? Um, we're going to head back, um, actually this Saturday, we're going to go run a 360 race, um, up in Minnesota on Saturday night. Um, then Sunday head over to, uh, Houston and run the weekly show there and then get ready for the, the showdown Monday, Tuesday and Jackson nationals this next week. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm thankful for, uh, the whole entire lunch family. We're going to go out swinging. We set ourselves back on a car couple weeks ago and destroyed a car so we're uh we're gonna go into this thing with um expectations of just trying to run up front with the outlaws the next few weeks you know next week or two and and um you know try to get out of there too, not not too bad but um you know be competitive and i think we have a great race car with the lunster family I am so glad you said that because we're going to do shows at Houston's and Jackson, and I get to see TK race in person. Aaron, we get to see TK race <laughs> in person. And have him on the show, right, TK? Well, well, okay, yeah, so. we'll, we'll come on the show no matter what. If win, lose, or draw, we're still going to come hang out. If, now, if we have the vodka Slurpees again, you never know what could happen. <laughs> ah, those, we those, were, those were good. They were really good. Vox, <laughs> vodka Slurpees, for sure. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Tim, loved seeing you and your boy and the whole crew in Victory Lane at Ocean. I know we'll see some more pictures of you in Victory Lane over the course of this year, but we appreciate taking some time today and joining us here on Wing Nation. Yeah, no problem. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to go get back to work and uh, take care of some of these uh, fine pools that we take care of out here in California. You're still doing the pool boy gig, <laughs> are you? Oh, yes, yes, doing the pool boy thing, and uh, it's definitely not like we see on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of having a little visual nightmare there, as a matter of fact, now that you mention that. <laughs> it's definitely not that way, I can tell you that. There we go. Thanks, so, Tim. Get back to work. We appreciate it. No problem. You guys have a great day. Oh, my God. TK, the pool boy. I remember we got into that with Kendra when she was hosting the show, and she, she did this whole thing with the pool boy, TK, and I'm like, I don't think this is the pool boy that you see on TV. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Um you just love life. Mm -hmm. When you talk to TK, you come out of it, you just love life. And he's always been like that. I, I love, I am, I am like, I'm doing this whole simply better, happy, you know, just a life is really good. I am at a really good spot. I absolutely love, I said something, he gets out of bed and uh, elbows up in the morning. He says, I think we all should, or yep. can we all? And I'm like, dang, dude, I might do a podcast on that. That's how good that one was. <laughs> I love it. I also want to mention that Bud Kading 
is rolling this year. Yeah. He has done everything but one a race. And I I am he's going to win some over this summertime and I'm I honestly am going to be interested to see what happens in September when the yeah. outlaws roll in there. Because I'm telling you that California bunch is getting it in one pile out there. They really are. They really are. By racing a lot. Peter Keller has another 410 race this Saturday yep. night, just a weekly show, being the West and everything else. It is cool. Fantastic. California is good. Wisconsin is good. We appreciate Tim Cading joining us on the Dry Dean Hotline. We're going to step away when we come back. Scotty Neitzel from up in Wisconsin, he joins us next. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Over 200 events from coast to coast, and they're celebrating 30 years of scattering soil. The American Sprint Car Series, the world's largest sprint car sanctioning body, and bringing more thrills with wing and even more non wing action in 2021. 11 regional tours, the national tour. No matter where you are, we're coming to a track near you. Can be there, get double streaming fun with Racing Boys and FlowRacing.com, bringing all the adrenaline to your favorite streaming device. See the full lineup of this now at ASCSRacing.com. Circle B Diecast is the new diecast outlet from Plan B Sales. What started as Lionel and Chase Authentic's apparel distributor has grown into the largest distributor of diecast and now includes Auto World Greenlight Collectibles, Brand Art, Sam Bass Artwork, and University of Racing Lines. They have a huge inventory. The folks at Circle B Diecast love racing and support drivers like Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and many others with sponsorships and partnerships. And on orders over $20, use promo code MRN for free shipping. Check them out, CircleBDiecast.com. It is Ally Week here on at MRN. All of our, everything we're doing is Ally Week because it's the Ally 400 NASCAR yep. race, Nashville. Yep. Music City, USA, yep, baby. Sir. Are you kidding me? I'm Back so fired up about way. that. Yes, it is. I'm so fired up about that. It is going to be great. And at the top of the show, in our Hefter Racing Products Hot Topics, I, I might have overstated just a little bit by saying Scotty Knight's the best story ever in the history of stories. I, I probably exaggerated a little bit. In the whole wide world of stories, there might be a little, little bit better. Bit of Maybe not for Scotty, though. He joins us now on the Dry Dean Hotline. Uh, Scotty, welcome back to Wing Nation. Uh, congratulations on what was a great weekend for you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it sure was. A, uh, on the way home, I looked at the guys. I said, I guess that was a solid weekend. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long time in the making for us. You know, it's been a, a long climb back to actually even just getting to the point where we feel competitive night in and night out. And uh, this weekend sure uh, capped it off on a few little things that we put together that just seemed to found me being real comfortable in the race car. Scotty, talk a little bit about, about Hartford. I didn't realize that they were reconfiguring. I don't know. I guess I've been in, in, hiding under a rock or something. But that track was always so fun and so fast. It still looks about as wide. But what, what was it like? How different was it? It was interesting. You know, I ran over at Hartford for a long time on the, on the big half mile, you know, and it's really fast. Uh, and a little treacherous and a little dark at times and <laughs> yeah. some days a little sketchy with a Michigan surface, you know, but, um, yeah, they left turns one and two kind of where it's always been. And they just kind of cut in turn three and four about right in the middle there. Um, it's a little different configuration the way they had to go about it, but I think they just tried to, uh, be able to maintain some weekly racing, you know, get the track a little mm. smaller, still interesting as ever with that surface, you know, that you have in Michigan, it's a little, a little interesting the race on always, but uh, it was fun. It's still plenty wide and it was actually still really fast. Um, to be honest, we didn't end up making a lot of changes from what it was with the big track. Hmm. Really? Oh, that's fascinating. That really is. You mentioned Michigan surface. What's the what's the difference between a Michigan surface? Is Michigan similar to Ohio? What's the difference between a Michigan surface and a Wisconsin surface? Yeah, for me, it's probably a lot different from Wisconsin. Wisconsin, we have a lot more clay and black dirt track teams in Michigan. Everything just seems to be more of a sandy, loose material. Um, you know, and you're kind of, you're racing on a lot of dirty racetracks compared to what we do in Wisconsin. A lot of the tracks in Wisconsin, um, clay or black dirt, even when it does get dry, tends to clean off a little bit more than what the sandy surface does. You're not quite uh, racing on top of that loose material quite as often. 
Scotty, you talked about trying to climb back up to the top. You know, you, you two-time champion. You hadn't won in a few years. What happened? Is it easy to just get off? Was it some stuff that just happened in life? You know, what what exactly went on last few years where now you see yourself getting back up there and getting some wins? Yeah, gosh, I don't know. I didn't even realize it had been as long as it had, I guess. <laughs> I really felt maybe I felt worse when they started saying it was that long. Um, you know, and we've ran a lot of different races. We've won some 360 races the last few years and a couple of unsanctioned 410 shows. Um, one was one of the last ones at Hartford on the big track and so forth. But the cars have just changed and evolved a little bit with the shock packages. The wings have changed the cars now that we've gone to completely flat wings versus where we were, say, 10 years ago when I felt like uh, myself and my race team was really competitive. Um, tires have changed a lot. And I felt like maybe we haven't kept up with each of those changes as they've happened. And all of a sudden, we were stuck, you know, I felt like three years ago with a, a completely different race car when in reality it really isn't. But for me and the things we were doing, it just felt that way. Um, Ten years ago, when we were really running good, it felt like, uh, you know, it'd come feature time, it'd dry up a little bit. We'd put a take two inches of stagger out, put a turn of left front in it, and pull the wing back a little bit and go. Mm-hmm. And um, it seemed like the last few years, and through the Goodyear tire transaction for a while, their transition, it felt like we had to... Um, make some pretty big swings at things to get the car where I needed it. And now it seems like we're almost transitioning back to fewer changes um, and just a little bit on shock changes and, uh, you know, a few things like that. So I think it's more things that my particular team just maybe didn't keep up with in each step. And we were just faced with so many steps at one time. How does a local team, a smaller team up in Wisconsin, keep up with the technology? Because uh, because we all know this thing, we talk to everybody, a crew chief type, but the technology is totally evolving. How do you guys, do you, do you have some buddies you talk to? Do people whisper your secrets on what people are looking at? How does a team keep up with like that? Yeah, you, you always, for me, it's a little different situation. Um, I run r and racing equipment, so we're a Maxim chassis dealer, a CSI shock dealer, you know, a standard wheel dealer. So we're involved with some of them teams a little more um, or some of those companies a little more often. It helps me a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, for me personally, I'm always pretty set in my ways and feel like I really know what I need. But again, I didn't keep up with it in little steps like I should have. And uh, it got me off track a little bit. But um, I do have to thank Jake from the NOSCAR out running the All-Star Series. He's helped me a little bit. He was my uh, He's a crew chief on that car now, and he was my uh, shock builder at CSI Shock for a couple of years. And uh, he's just, uh, you know, giving me a little direction here or there. Randy Hannigan, a good friend of mine, has uh, just pointed me in a little bit of different direction every now and again. And some of those things help. And more than anything, just kind of getting away, at the same time, getting away from some all that hype and what you hear. Everybody's doing this and everybody's doing that. And, um, for us, midsummer last year, we just settled in, though, what, does, what do I feel like I need when I get out of the car every night? And we started making good notes of that. And I'd tell them when I felt like I needed my crew would tell me exactly what they seen. Sometimes they were completely different things. And uh, I feel like that's why it's taken so long to pull all those little pieces together. But um, we've been really solid all summer. And I can't say enough for the, uh, you know, the companies that have supported me and the fans that have supported me. Yeah, you can easily, you know, that happens in racing. You can get a little bit off and then trying to fight your way back is certainly not easy. Scotty, when you have a weekend like this and when you sweep it, you win two in a row, uh, they're they're special. You know, you're always, people say you're as good as your last race and often you win and you run the next night and you're, you know, have a bad night. How neat is it to come away with two wins in a row like that and have a few days to really enjoy it? Yeah, it was really a lot of fun. For me, it was fun to go over to Hartford, a place that um, historically we've had some success at over the years. Um, with some IRA shows, some gloss shows they had years ago, um, some weekly shows they had. It was interesting, all the, you know, some different fans that stopped in, stopped in to see us, some people that worked at the racetrack. Um, so I guess at Hartford, when we left there, everybody um, looked at me at their victory lane and said, you're not very excited. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm more content and really happy, and I feel like this is what we expect we should be doing. So I was really more content with the situation. But, boy, after Saturday night at Wilmot, because we looked through our books and you know, just looking back at the last three years, I think we accounted for four or five second place finishes to that uh, that 17B car. You know, so uh, it, it felt good to feel like maybe we. Uh, I, I don't know if Bill was back tomorrow. You know, if we'd be at at the level to really race with Bill, Bill wheel to wheel for 30 laps. But I felt like we had um, shown how good we have been in the past, um, and the direction we're headed. So it really feels great, great to come off a weekend like that. So. 
Do you uh, do you just stick to IRA or do you do any other racing here between now, uh, say over the next couple of uh, couple of months? Or are you just sticking right 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 to home there in Wisconsin with the IRA? Uh, for us, I mean, our focus is definitely going to be in the IRA series. Um, to say it, a lot of people talk about championships. I don't know what that brings down the road. We'll see where that leads. For the most part, we just want to win some more races this year. That was our goal when the year started. Um, the points land where they land at the end. Um, we're going to focus on the IRA stuff because realistically, it just makes sense for where we're at. He's put together a, a good package that just fits what we're trying to do up here. Um, on top of that, with running RNH racing equipment, there's plenty of work to do in the shop to keep some of the local guys going. We do chassis repair work and a lot of those things. Um, right at home this weekend is the World of Outlaws show, so we are actually going to uh, we're going to saddle up and run that one and uh, see how we can shake out with those guys. We've got a few things. That, uh, and that's one of us probably a struggled racetrack for me. It seems right here at home over the years, but we've got a couple things in mind that have worked at some other places here recently um, that we're excited to try there and uh, see if we can just get a solid finish with the World of Outlaws. I, I know 100% they're in another league, um, but we really like to see what we can do. Saturday night at Beaver Dam, that is for sure. Scotty, great, great story. Congratulations getting back to Victory Lane, and uh, now that you've uh, found the key to it, I am fairly confident you'll do it frequently. Thanks again for joining us here on Wing Nation. Thanks for having me. If that is not a great story, I love the word he talked about when he left Hartford, content. Yeah. I love the word content. That is, to me, we can be happy, we can be beaten on our chest, we can be doing all of this, but boy, when you walk out of some situation content, that's a pretty neat, that's a pretty neat yeah, spot to be at. absolutely. And then to win the next night, and then to really celebrate. Well, then, <laughs> then you go from content to uh, over the top of the world, uh, nearing the best story in the history of stories. <laughs> Sunoco is a proud partner of Wing Nation. Not all fuels are created equal, so fill up with Sunoco Ultratech. Sunoco Ultratech is a top-tier detergent gasoline that is proven to make your engine run cleaner, longer, and more efficiently. Using the same detergent package as what is blended into some of Sunoco's high-performance race fuels, you can trust Ultratech for your everyday race. Whether you're headed to the track or just hitting the road, fill up with Sunoco Ultratech and fuel your best. For a year-round high-quality eating experience, look no further than sage fruit, apples, pears, and cherries. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. Sage fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Aggressive Hydraulics provides solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. For instance, agriculture, construction, defense, emergency services, energy, food processing, forestry, marine, mining, railway, and even truck equipment. They design and manufacture mobile-style single-stage cylinders as well as multi-stage telescopic cylinders. It's a no-one-size-fits-all approach with Aggressive Hydraulics. Check out their story at AggressiveHydraulics.com. One sprint car place that is a special, special place. I'm and going that's there you're this going there this weekend. weekend. You I'll bet. be there in a couple weeks. I'll be there in a couple weeks because I'm doing, oh, are you kidding me? You got <laughs> SRX with the 410s. Yep. I've got uh, the trucks on Friday night, and then I've got um, USAC and the 410s on Saturday. And then night. we have the big one. And then we have the big one, the 60th running of the Knoxville Nationals. Wow, it is cool. But back to one sprint car place. That is the <laughs> destination and location of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. We talk about birthdays. Lee Elkins and Sam Hoffman. Later this week, J.C. Agajanian, Don Basile, Joe Scalzo has a birthday coming up later on. Clarence Mutt Anderson. Today, Johnny Anderson, Gene Marderness, Dick Simonek. Um, but from the very first check of social media this morning, throughout all day long, the outpouring uh, today would have been the birthday of Brian Clawson. Brian, a 2018 inductee into the Sprint Car Hall of Fame, a three-time USAC National Midget Champion, three to, or two-time USAC National Sprint Car Champion. He won it all in midgets. He won in NASCAR, IndyCar, wing sprint cars, and way, way, way too soon, he was taken from us on August 7th, 2016, which I, it, it boggles my I, mind that we're nearing five years I've that. thought the same thing when I started looking at our notes. And I, I know that date, but I was like, I, I could put the math together. I'm thinking, it's almost been five years. Almost been five years. Oof. You had a, the only word is a beautiful friendship with Brian and with the Clawson family. Yep, and I, and I still do to this day with the family, but I, I think I've told the story on air before, but I went to driving school with him and uh, Mike Lozier's school, finish line driving school in Florida, and 
gosh, 2005, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And Ryan and I kind of knew each other through, you know, sponsors. Uh, I think we both were with Impact Racing at the time and uh, became friends, ended up going to dinner every night and just started this friendship where, you know, one of those, you don't see them all the time, but every time you just feel like they're, they're family members. And to this day, like Tim Clausen is actually going to be able to make it to the SRX race this weekend. Really? So I'm um, pretty excited to spend time with them. That'll yeah. be a neat reunion. Yeah, yeah. The That'll Marshals be will be reunion. there where I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially after the year we've been through and then be yep. able to get a chance to, to hug a couple next there. And, and is, then he uh, won't be working and I will be fake working. So, you know, oh, we'll get to spend it. some yeah. time together, maybe yeah. have a few beverages. W- wonderful, wonderful people. Yes. They really are. And, uh, I think, I think arguably the, uh, and, and the, the irony is just amazing maybe the best sprint car race that I ever called as far as an announcer. And I don't do a lot of announcing sprint car races, um, you know, uh, but I did the party at the path where Brian mm-hmm. and Greg Hodnett just went toe yeah. to toe and threw haymakers at each other. Hodnett won the race and he got out of the car and he said, when you beat a guy like Brian Clawson, that is satisfaction. Um, just neat. And, and now yeah. we look, and unfortunately, Brian nor Greg, we don't, and that's the that's the 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 the, the irony of it is is that we lost both of them way yeah. too soon. But uh, yeah, Brian Clawson uh, would have been his birthday today. National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum they have their Corvette raffle going on. Win a Z fifty one Corvette sweepstakes. This is an Elkhart Lake Blue Metallic LT three Corvette. Drawing will be held on the 14th of August, right before the Knoxville Nationals. www.winaz51corvette, z51corvette.com. You can get your ticket. Aaron, racing all week long. <laughs> I actually got back last night from, I'm doing the summer shootout out of Charlotte. Got back and uh, got to watch the last 10 or 11 mm-hmm. laps. I had a red flag. Me too. Got to watch the last few Just laps. Last and little watch, bit. watch Kyle Larson uh, roll to the win. Go from the all-star um, win to the... Yeah, all-star win. All-star win. All-star, all-star, the all-star, all-star. all-star to the all-star. All-star to the all-star, yeah. Uh, tonight, Sharon Speedway, Waynesfield, Muskegon County, Lima Land, and then that Bean, uh, big Dean Niddle Memorial coming up on Saturday night at Portsmouth. We'll talk more about that on our Thursday podcast. Wing Nation Roadshow next week, the showdown. It's this the, the showdown race, Sunday night, the Houston's 50, uh, or it's Houston's 50 weekend. Sunday night is the Chuck Zitterich tribute race. Chuck, what a great guy. Chuck mm-hmm. was so instrumental with uh, Todd Quaring getting involved in sprint car racing. And so the tribute race there, Monday and Tuesday, it's the Houston's 50, World of Outlaws, Tuesday night, 30,000 to win. Thursday through Saturday, 43rd edition of the Agco Jackson Nationals, 50,000 to win. Wing Nation, we're going to be live all of the World of Outlaw nights. That's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And this is going to be neat. Okay. Well, Ashley and I are doing Houston's, and you and Ashley, it's girls' night out, are doing Jackson. You bet. So it's going to be great. What is really cool about this, we're going to be on our Facebook and Dirt Vision's Facebook, but we are actually going to be on Dirt Vision itself. So, and what we're going to do, we're going to get to the end. We're going to get to the end of the show, and it's going to be those of you on Facebook. Thanks for joining us. We're going to turn that stream <laughs> off. We're going to go to a commercial break. When we come back, Johnny Gibson's going to take it over. We are literally pre-race, yeah. pre-game on Dirt Vision. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? It is. It is. It is. Uh, oh, my gosh. It is so neat. And then all of the activity, hauler parade, golf tournament, pancake breakfast. I already set Ashley up. That she needs to do the pancake yeah, breakfast. Yeah, she's got to try to flip them this flip time. Them. She's going to be flipping. you make sure you get a camera flipper out. as I yeah, am. You are flipping those Now, pancakes. what about our 5K? Are you getting out of our 5K? I got out of it. It's oh. all right. I did one in Texas this Sunday morning in 9,000 degrees. Oh, it was Yeah, great. exactly. I'm, I'm good on 5Ks right now. Uh, and then Friday morning, the Agco Open House at the uh, Intivity Center. That is a wonderful event, yeah. too. So uh, you can follow along uh, with all of our social media on Wing Nation. And um, just a big road show, the showdown, all next week. We are so excited to get up there. Wing Nation Apparel, like this 10th anniversary T-shirt. There we go. We go. 10th anniversary t-shirt is available at wingnation.com all this week in Ohio. Y'all better be buying our shirts up there at Ohio Speed Week. You can go right tonight at Sharon Speedway at the All-Star Circuit of Champions trailer and get your Wing Nation 10th anniversary gear. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of these channels. Coming up on Thursday, one of my favorite journeys of the year is when ASCS goes mm-hmm. out west. And Scott Trailer from Racing Boys has been documenting it. has been part of it every year. We're going to talk to Scott. And then coming up, on Wing Nation Weekend, our television program. This is another great story. J.J. Hickel, the guy that nobody saw coming to the national tour, and now everybody is watching out of the front of their race cars. J.J. Hickel joins Ashley and I on our television program. Thank you to Tim Kading and to Scotty Neitzel for joining us. More important than all of that, though, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented... 
by Hercules Tires. 